Hi, my name is David Kaplan. I'm an associate professor and deputy head of the Department of Cognitive Science at Macquarie University. Today I wanted to talk to you briefly about some of the options to study the mind and brain here at Macquarie University. One of the most pressing scientific challenges of the 21st century is deciphering how the mind and brain work. Although researchers have made great strides in recent decades, many fundamental questions remain unanswered. But this shouldn't be surprising given that the brain is among the most complex systems in the known universe. So with around 86 billion neurons, the same as the number of stars in the Milky Way, and 100 trillion connections, the complexity of the human brain is truly daunting. The enormity of the challenge, and it's important for understanding the causes of devastating and increasingly prevalent diseases, including Parkinson's and Alzheimer's disease, explains why the cognitive and brain sciences have experienced explosive growth in recent decades. For example, two of the largest scientific initiatives today focus on dramatically advancing knowledge about the brain. Comparable in scope and ambition to the Human Genome Project, the Brain Initiative is a large-scale research initiative with ambitious goal of mapping the activity of every neuron in the human brain. The EU-led Human Brain Project aims to simulate the entire human brain using supercomputers in an effort to drastically increase our understanding of the function and structure of the, of the brain. Both are massive projects bringing together hundreds of researchers from across the globe. So it's a tremendously exciting time to be involved in these fields. And now, students at Macquarie University will have the opportunity to explore these topics. So you might not know exactly what cognitive scientists do. Cognitive scientists aim to understand cognition, human behavior, and the brain systems that support these capacities. Researchers in the Department of Cognitive Science at Macquarie University are actively investigating lots of different things, including attention, perception, memory, learning, decision-making, action, motor control, reading and language, cognitive disorders, including autism, dyslexia, and schizophrenia. Macquarie University has world-class researchers and world-class research facilities in the cognitive brain sciences. Neuroscientists use functional neuroimaging methods, including functional magnetic resonance imaging, magneto, encephalography, MEG, and electroencephalography, EEG, including many more methods. We've built the degree in the cognitive and brain sciences so that students have as much access to authentic research experience and research data as possible. So we've got world-class researchers, world-class research facilities, and the degree incorporates all those. So there are three different courses that we offer in the Department of Cognitive Science. There's a bit of overlap between each of these, but the main difference is the breadth and depth of study across the different courses. So in the major, which is a qualifying major in the Bachelor of Human Sciences, you have the opportunity to take eight units on various topics in the cognitive and brain sciences. In the specialization in cognitive neuroscience, you take 12 units. And in the degree, you take 24 units. So in the interest of time, I'm gonna zoom in and talk specifically about the Bachelor of Cognitive and Brain Sciences. The Bachelor degree in Cognitive and Brain Sciences will provide you with an exciting new pathway for undertaking concentrated study in the rapidly growing fields of cognitive science and neuroscience. So the degree will provide you with the opportunity to get invaluable research experience to pursue higher degree research, including the Master's of Research or the PhD. It will also prepare you more generally for a wide variety of careers which require critical thinking and research skills. The degree is a unique degree offering in Australia that builds on our longstanding international reputation for cognitive science at Macquarie University. The degree in cognitive and brain sciences provides a strong foundation in cognitive science, neuroscience, and computation, with an emphasis on building essential research skills, including proficiency in science communication, statistics, programming, and critical thinking. After completing foundational coursework in a broad range of disciplines, you'll have the opportunity to focus on individual areas of interest as you progress through your degree. So just for a second, I wanted to zoom in and just give you as an example, one of the, one of the units that we offer in a first year. So this is Introduction to Neuroscience One, also known as COGS 1000. In this unit, you'll be exposed to what you'd be exposed to in typical neuroscience, introductory neuroscience units, but with an interesting twist. So we try to, throughout the degree, offer authentic research experiences to our students. And I think this is exemplified best by looking at a first year unit. So in this unit, you will not only get lectures from 
neuroscientists. You'll not only have um, exposure to all sorts of um, tutorial content, but you'll also have the opportunity to conduct labs to basically record your own brain activity. So that's what you're seeing here. This is a photo from real students in COGS 1000 just from a couple years ago. So you get research-oriented teaching delivered by world-class researchers in the cognitive brain sciences, and you get hands-on experiences embedded throughout the degree. Now I just want to talk for a second about what the Bachelor of Cognitive Brain Sciences does so in terms of how it prepares you for a career, because I know that's on the minds of many of you. So just an interesting fact to start with, about 44% or about 5 point million of current Australian jobs are at high risk of being affected by automation and technology over the next 20 years. And by high risk, I mean that there's a substantial chance that the job could be automated by technology. Some of the jobs most likely to be affected are those where computer or machine learning systems or robotics are able to perform simple and routine tasks faster and more accurately than humans. These typically include unskilled and low-skilled activities in offices, factories, and shops, but increasingly, these also include white-collar jobs. Things like data entry, operating checkouts, bookkeeping, and even doing simple office administration tasks. The impact on the Australian workforce will be significant not only for employees, but also for businesses, which are already struggling to find appropriately skilled talent. So even though it can be a bit daunting to think about, identifying jobs that have a low risk of being automated is a really important thing to think about. Now, research indicates that jobs most likely to endure over the next couple of decades are ones that require high levels of technical ability and social and creative intelligence. This includes doctors and nurses, teachers, engineers, among others. But what about the jobs we don't know we need yet, the jobs of the future. The rapidly changing nature of technology and global competition makes it difficult to predict exactly what these jobs will be. But one of the best ways to future-proof your choices in terms of your degree is to improve, take a degree that will allow you to improve your capabilities in science, technology, engineering, and math subjects, STEM subjects. Businesses competing in a global economy driven by data, digital technologies, and innovation will need more STEM trade employees. Research indicates that 75% of the fastest growing occupations now require STEM skills. And over 70% of Australian employers identify STEM employees as being among the most innovative. There will also be a growing need for, a, for the broad skills that STEM fosters, critical thinking and problem solving, analytic capabilities, curiosity and imagination, have all been identified as critical survival skills in the workplace of the future. So that growing need um, is really well covered by the Bachelor of Cognitive Brain Sciences because it'll help you develop critical thinking and problem solving skills, research and analytic skills, and data science skills. Now, I've given you lots to think about today, and so I'm just gonna so give you a little bit more. This is just to think about maybe the possibility of doubling your degree. So doing a double degree in cognitive and brain sciences along with some other degree of your choosing. So some of the advantages include that new double degrees will give you the power to combine diverse areas of study. Increased employability increases your career flexibility and leads to greater employment prospects. Fast track learning, usually completed one or two or even years faster than separate degrees. So you can, when you combine two different degrees, it doesn't take twice as long. It's both flexible and also focused. By undertaking two degrees at the same time, you have, it's, an, it's an excellent opportunity for you to, to pursue two different passions. So how do you enroll in a double degree? You choose your ideal combination for one of the double degrees. You check that you meet the entry requirements. Then you study both degrees concurrently, completing the core zones of each of those respective degrees. And you graduate with two separate bachelor degrees. So now it's my pleasure to introduce Xanthi Harrison, who was a student in the Cognitive Brain Sciences just a few years ago. And she's here to tell you just a little bit about her experiences in the degree and also tell you a bit about the exciting things that she's doing now. So thank you, Professor David Kaplan, for your knowledge on the Cognitive and Brain Sciences degree now and also the majors. 
So my name is Zampi Harrison and I completed the Bachelor of Human Sciences, majoring in Human Movement and Cognitive and Brain Sciences at the end of 2018. The Cognitive and Brain Sciences major was something my dad actually found when I was looking at the elective space I had for my degree and I decided to do a double major. I'd never heard of Cognitive Science before and it was a new major when I began in 2016. What really attracted me to it was the focus about learning about the brain, which was something I hadn't done in school, but was interested to do at uni. When I was looking into the major, there was a big emphasis on it having practical applications and hands-on experience, which sounded great. I can easily say that the Cognitive and Brain Sciences major was my favourite aspect of my degree. I loved all of the compulsory subjects I took, as well as the elective I chose throughout my major, which really set me up for opportunities while I was studying and since completing my degree. The most memorable part of the major for me was seeing research and technology be brought to the classroom, which is something you don't see often in other disciplines. In our first year, we'll introduce the Emotive, which is a type of non-invasive and portable brain scan device, which measures the electrical activity of your brain. Being able to see your brain waves was really exciting and a lot of fun. We also got to use the Emotive again in second year and one of our assignments was based around running an experiment using the Emotive and then analysing the data that had been collected. Being able to see a small research project was really valuable and useful for all of my other units as well, but then since then reading journal articles and understanding how the research project process works. In my last year of the degree, I also had the opportunity to complete a PACE unit, which offers practical industry experience. My placement was with one of the academics in the research at the Cognitive Science Faculty, and I wrote up a paper looking at the impacts of martial arts on bullying behaviours. Research isn't something I'd considered before coming to uni and for most of my degree, but that experience as well as the labs and the other subjects really interested me. From the research placement, the experience with the Emotive and research during the major, I've had experience since completing my studies to continue research. Currently, I'm working with academics in the Cognitive and Brain Sciences faculty, a PhD student and other, other students in concussion research. Last year, over the rugby and AFL seasons, we were able to collaborate with the Macquarie University sports teams to track the brain health of the AFL Rugby League and rugby union teams using the emotive and other tests at the field. So we were able to measure how the brain health of the players tracked over a season and what their brain looks like post-concussion. This has now led to other research opportunities since then using lab-based technologies. So last year I began a Master of Orthoptics, which is all about eye movement and eye pathology. My undergraduate degree, and particularly the Cognitive and Brain Sciences major, set me up really well with a foundation in research, technology and neuroscience, which I've been able to transfer to my current subjects. My course is largely focused around vision and the visual system, and much of which I was able to learn about in my perception subjects, which I took as electives in my second and third year. Cognitive science is really such a unique area and there is so much practical research always being published. I really can't recommend the major enough and luckily for you the degree as well. It's an ever-growing field and I can really take you down so many paths so I believe there's something in it for everyone. So I'll hand back over to Professor David Kaplan for you. All right, thanks very much Xanthi. Now I'm going to hand it over to the live team who can answer any of your questions about the degree or the major or the specialization. Thank you. Good afternoon and welcome to the Psychology and Cognitive Science Studio here as part of Macquarie University's Open Day Streams. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. If this is your first session with us at the studio, my name's Dylan and I'm a second year student currently studying a Bachelor of Psychology Honours and a Bachelor of Laws here at Macquarie University. You would have just seen a really awesome presentation by Dr. David Kaplan, all about cognitive science and the exciting opportunities that await you there. And we're actually lucky enough to be joined by him in studio right now live to answer our questions. So thank you so much for coming in and welcome. Thanks for having me. Not a problem. Um, Dr. Kaplan is not only a lecturer and a researcher at Macquarie, but he's also the Deputy Head of Cognitive Science here at Macquarie. And his research focuses mainly on motor control and motor learning. So how we move and how we learn to move. So really, really interesting aspects of human condition and, and really interesting uh, example of how you can go about studying cognitive and brain science here at Macquarie University. 
So thank you so much for tuning in. We've got a whole bunch of questions that have been sent in by you guys. So we'll dive right into them now. If you do have any more questions, you can definitely put them in the live chat, which is in the bottom corner of your screen down here. And we'll have one of Dr. Kaplan's uh, associates and colleagues answering those questions for you. So you can get personalized advice based off whatever you wanna know. Jumping into the questions now, the first question we have is asking, what postgraduate study could this degree lead to? Yeah, great question. Um, so, so we really designed the Bachelor of Cognitive Brain Sciences as a pathway into higher degree research. And so primarily for us, it's, that means the Masters of Research here at Macquarie University. So um, students who've come through our degree or are tracking through our degree right now, uh, are looking to continue on in higher degree research would go into the Masters of Research, which is a two year um, research degree. And if, that's, if, if additional study is something that um, is of interest, then there's also the PhD. So those are really the two primary um, options here at Macquarie University is the Master's of Research, which is a two-year degree. First year is coursework. Second year is a research project um, under the supervision of one of, um, one of the researchers in the Department of Cognitive Science or one of the other departments across the university. And then the PhD is a three-year um, doctoral program, which is much more um, involved research project. So I guess the natural question to follow on from that is after you do the study and, and you've done your undergrad and potentially even postgrad, what sort of career options are open to someone studying cognitive science? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so unlike some degrees that have very specific targets when you finish the degree, I think from the outset we've sort of designed the Bachelor of Cognitive Brain Sciences to really give a broad kind of foundation in neuroscience, in cognitive science, and also in computation. Um, and in a way to sort of give really, I think, generalizable sort of research skills. Um, I think that's the, really the way we designed the degree is to provide students with a really strong kind of scientific background and research background so that they can go on to do lots of different things. Um, not just higher degree research, but also you know, careers in potentially kind of entry level careers in like data science or um, we have students who are doubling the Bachelor of Cognitive Brain Sciences with like a Bachelor of Information Technology. Um, and I think those students are probably looking more to kind of go into areas like data science or machine learning. Um, so there's lots of different options. Um, there are probably some students who are doubling our degree with the Bachelor of Medical Science, um, interested in biotech or other kind of biomedical um, programs, possibly even postgraduate medicine. Um, so yeah, I think the options are pretty limitless. It's really more a matter of where the student wants to focus as they go through the degree and kind of what they see as um, yeah, kind of the end target. So it really is in some ways a general scientific degree that sort of sets, sets students up for a, a huge range of options. And hopefully, um, as I said in my, in my um, video, um, hopefully set students up for jobs that are going to be available f over the next, you know, five to ten years. Areas that are, you know, basically big data, um, dealing with machine learning and some of the kind of areas related to that. And with some of those really interesting things, the awesome thing is not only do you get a lot of flexibility and a lot of choice in what you want to pursue after your degree, but these sound like huge growth areas and, and jobs that are being created for the future. And you're definitely future-proofing your, your career and your workforce through what you're studying in uni through yes. this degree. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think the future-proofing idea, let's, let's hope that is, is what happens. I mean, the future is, is something that's very hard to predict, but I do think that having a solid foundation in a biological science like neuroscience definitely is an area of tremendous growth over the last 20 or 30 years. So in, in terms of the, the kind of capital resources that are being sort of um, expended to propel neuroscience research and also research on um, brain diseases is pretty astronomical in comparison to lots of other areas of science these days. There's huge pro initiatives all over the globe right now to kind of fuel the growth of neuroscience research. Um, and so, yeah, I do think, and then also because we try to give students exposure to computational and research skills during the degree, I think, you know, everybody probably can sort of very sort of um, easily appreciate that, you know, understanding how computers work and how, how you might program a computer is becoming 
pretty much an invaluable skill across virtually every single undergraduate degree. Of course. And it's so cool to think that a Bachelor of Cognitive and Brain Science can be the first step on that journey to so many amazing options. Um, so the next question we have here is another really good question. It asks about whether there are any practical work placements or learning opportunities built into the course. Yeah, okay. So there are. So I mean, across Macquarie University, one of the things that's sort of distinctive about Macquarie University um, among um, universities in Australia is that we have a program called PACE. So I, I'm not going to go into the details of that, but every single course at the university has um, a placement at the end, the third year. And um, that could either be a placement in industry or it could be a placement in a research lab. And so um, that's one place where we try to embed really authentic research experiences for students who are interested in research. Lots of students do PACE projects with me or other people in my department um, undertaking some kind of research project. Um, but we've also really designed the degree, the degree so that you don't have to wait to the third year to actually start getting research experiences. So even at the very first year, um, I teach a, a, a unit called Introduction to Neuroscience, just an introductory neuroscience unit. Um, in that course, we actually, in that unit, we run through, we actually give students the opportunity to record their own brain activity, record their own muscle activity, so they actually do lab experiences from the first year. And then in the second year of the degree, there's also um, a project-based research laboratory unit that students have. So really, and uh, across the degree, there's opportunities for um, research um, and active learning experiences. Absolutely. And it's amazing that right from your very first year, you're able to engage with these sort of technologies and this practical element that are the same technologies and the same practices that absolute professionals use in, in their and experts use in their fields much further down the track than you are in first year of a degree. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that really was the kind of goal that we had when we set out to design the degree, the degree was to give students authentic research experiences from, you know, as early into, into, their, um, into their program as possible. Which is completely invaluable. Perfect, thank you so much for that. We do have another question, a very timely one now, considering the fact we're streaming to you live instead of with our typical on-campus open day. Uh, the question is about how might COVID-19 restrictions affect the practical learning components of the course next year? Yeah, um, yeah, it's a really timely question. Um, so um, I can really just extrapolate from what we're doing right now. Um, so right now in all of our units across um, our department the, that feature into the, the Bachelor of Cognitive Brain Sciences. Um, if any of those units have practical components, what we try to do is, um, well, right now, the university in session two is back on campus. So there are on-campus um, tutorials and on-campus practicals that we are also running. Um, but for those students who are maybe high risk, maybe, you know, they have, they are themselves high risk for some reason, or they have family members who are high risk, immunocompromised or whatever else. Um, we are trying to be as flexible as we possibly can. So offering alternative assessment tasks for students who can't come to campus um, and can't do those practicals with the hope being that hopefully we'll get to a stage at some point, hopefully by next year. Um, but if not, there's lots of different options for students to really compete, complete most of the degree without actually having to come to campus. Although we hope that the students will be able to participate in those things because um, they really are a valuable component of the degrees, kind of coming in and using the research equipment, doing um, data collection, um, you know, in a hands-on way. So we really hope that COVID-19 is, is um, not with us next year and we can kind of start fresh, but I think even if, if the situation is still um, what it is right now, we still will be able to um, you know, really flex offer flexible arrangements for virtually every student. I couldn't agree more. And the fact as well that we obviously can't welcome you guys onto campus today. So we have our open day streams. You can see even we're socially distanced, making sure that campus is as safe a place as possible and minimizing the risk for those who come to campus, but also allowing those flexible arrangements and not locking you into having to be on campus or not being able to come to campus. It really is quite amazing how Macquarie has been able to be as flexible as possible and adapt to this 
really strange time that we're living in. <laughs> uh, so we have another question that's come through, a really good one. It gets asked quite a lot and it's really good for cognitive science. Um, it asks, what would be a useful double degree um, and what, what degree could you couple cognitive and brain science with to make up a double degree? Yeah, good question. Um, so uh, hopefully, hopefully this, the people who are watching out at, from home have sort of seen kind of the general, I guess the sort of general curriculum at Macquarie University um, as of 2020 is really designed to kind of optimize students' ability to sort of pair any two degrees. And that's also true about the Bachelor of Cognitive Brain Sciences. Um, so we really do, we've already seen um, in our first, first year running the degree, lots of students like to double. Um, unfortunately, I don't have those, the, the actual numbers with me, but just off the top of my head, I know that we have a lot of students who do um, a Bachelor of Cognitive Brain Sciences paired with a Bachelor of Psychology. Um, you might think that that sounds like it's two degrees that are identical. Um, and I think um, my colleagues have, have maybe uh, already addressed this question um, earlier on, but there's the Bachelor of Psychology is a little bit more clinically oriented. And the Bachelor of Cognitive Brain Science is a little bit more, I think, research oriented and neuroscience oriented. And so a lot of students have found that that kind of pairing is really um, useful to them and what they want to do. Um, there's a lot of students who are doing a Bachelor of Cognitive Brain Sciences uh, with a Bachelor of Human Sciences, um, which also gives them a bit more of a broad based background in the, all the different human sciences, linguistics, psychology, um, education in some, in some for some students. And um, there's, a, as I think I mentioned just a little bit ago, there's also a number of students who are doing Bachelor of Cognitive Brain Sciences with the Bachelor of Information Technology. Uh, I'm probably forgetting quite a few other doubles. I mean, you can imagine doing a Bachelor, oh, there's actually, there are a lot of students who are doing Bachelor of Cognitive Brain Sciences paired with a um, Bachelor of Medical Sciences. So as mentioned before, that's a lot of students I think kind of paired those as a way to um, kind of set themselves up for maybe a career in, bi in biotech or biomedical science. Um, but I think, yeah, the real, the real beauty of the curriculum at the university right now is that students, um, if they're kind of creative, they can kind of show us what interesting pairings are. So there are lots of different opportunities and I'm kind of pretty excited to see the unique combinations of, of doubles that students come up with um, and then, yeah, what they ultimately what they end up doing with it. Really exciting. Absolutely. And I, we talked about that level of flexibility and um, sort of diversity that you can achieve before. But with a double degree, obviously, that's only increased and the, the doors that remain open to you and are opened to you through those degrees are really invaluable. So fantastic thing to be able to do to combine so many degrees. Um, looks like we've got one last question that we can answer for you now. Um, the question is, what are some interesting research areas linked to this area of study? Yeah, okay. So uh, that's a very, bro a very um, big question and probably spend the rest of the afternoon talking about different research areas. Um, but as I, as I mentioned before, cognitive brain sciences um, really sort of encompass uh, neuroscience, um, psychology, philosophy, linguistics, um, computation. And so specifically, it can talk about cognitive science. There's a lot of researchers in our department who um, not only do research, but also run units that sort of focus on their research interests. So we have um, units and researchers working on memory, um, perception, vision, um, audition, or hearing is a really big kind of research area here at Macquarie University. Um, motor control, motor learning, um, learning in general, um, attention. Um, yeah, I could probably go on and on, but there's a lot of really exciting um, research at the university, um, not just in the Department of Cognitive Science, but across a bunch of different departments, all really working to understand how the mind and brain work. Absolutely, and the fact that you can choose these areas and follow your passion. And there's so many facilities and resources at the uni to help you follow that. For example, we talked about hearing just then, um, the fact that we have the cochlea building on campus, uh, which is, as some of you surely know, is like cochlear implants for your ears. So such huge areas and major movers in, in the industry who are right on our doorstep and we're able to utilize that and then pursue it. So definitely a really fantastic variety and the depth to follow through with it. 
Um, thank you so much, Dr. Kaplan, for coming in this afternoon. Hope you guys had all your questions answered and got something out of the session. If you still have more questions and you want to learn more, we have our live chat function just in the bottom corner here that you can click on and then talk to a, a professional, talk to an expert and have all your questions answered. Uh, you can also head up to the top to the main stage and check out what's happening there. There's some lots of exciting things happening all day. And from there, you can go to other areas of study and, and find out about law or business or whatever it is that you want to see. That's all for us now, but we have another session on psychology at 2.30, so be sure to tune in for that. Uh, and there's also a whole lot of frequently asked questions and downloadable documents that you'll also find on this page. So thank you again, Dr. Kaplan, Thanks. and thank you to everyone watching. See you later.